Welcome back to the Super Not Funny Show Reviews. And today I'm reviewing Foundation Season 2, Episode 7. It's entitled A Necessary Death. And it's coming to you from Apple TV+. Plus. So, what did I think about it? And should you be watching? And before we get into the review, get down there. Hit like on this video. Man, I'm, I'm not even going to beat around the bush. This is the best episode of the season so far uh and with the you know a few left that's uh you know that's kind of saying something uh because if this is the best one so far the next three have got to be just like you know bangers uh i love the that this episode is really you know sort of crystallizing what the final conflict of this season the crisis between the empire and the foundation really are going to be and i'd have to say it's the dissolution of, uh, you know, the, the eventual dissolution of the Cleonic dynasty. Now, we know Cleon's been sort of, you know, uh, engineering that anyway with this whole Queen Sarath business and wanting to have kids of his own and everything like that. He's so single-minded in it that we forget that, yes, he is still keeping tabs on what the hell's going on with, uh, you know, foundation out on, on the outer uh, edges of the Empire, and that uh, in the previous episode, he had taken Constant and Polly uh, prisoner. And so we get to see that confrontation, uh, you know, with, within the throne room. Uh, but a, a, quite a bit of this episode is also dedicated to, you know, Queen Sarath and her learning the truth about what happened to her family. Was it what she, she suspected? Was it an accident? Hell no, it wasn't a damn accident. Uh, we had heard from the previous episode uh, from the mouth of Demerzel that, in fact, um, you know, they did in, that Demerzel engineered the deaths of everyone except her so that she would be the ideal prospect for a day. Uh, but in this one, Demerzel says it straight up to her face. And there's actually a big, you know, a big kind of confrontation between the two of them. Sarah, Queen Sarah, she's she's been very brash and brazen about how she goes about sort of ferreting out this information and trying to maneuver Day and Demerzel into a sort of a situation where she's not expendable. And she's done well so far, but well, we get to hear from, you know, from Demerzel straight up what she's on about. And what she's on about is apparently murdering anyone who gets in the way of Empire. As she says, she serves Empire. I find all of this very fascinating. Like, if you don't know anything about this story, this is just, oh my God, you know, this is a servant that doesn't tire, doesn't sleep, and does not give two fucks about, you know, murdering anybody to keep Empire in, intact. Um, and I, I caution everyone, and I encourage you to think hard about what Demerzel means when she says, I serve Empire. What what does that mean? Uh, because, and and earlier on in, in the episode, uh, when she is sort of approaching Day in what I would call an intimate way, and he rejects her, he essentially says, you know, hey, you know, whenever I have kids, you know, you're still welcome here. We need you. When I have kids, they'll be Empire too. And I'm like, ugh, well, think about what that says when she says she serves Empire. Uh, but she, you know, she lets on to... Uh, you know, Sarah, that she did in fact have her, her people killed, and that really colors the rest of the interaction between Sarah and the Cleonic uh, dynasty for the rest of the episode. Uh, because she, uh, you know, she goes to Day himself and pretty much tries to to guilt him, which I don't know why you think that works with with Cleons, but okay about all the people that she knew that she loved that were killed because he wanted her in particular. And they sort of kind of draw their lines about who knows what and, and you know, basically that she should be grateful she's even alive. A very interesting stuff. See, that's the thing is, uh, you know, and Joyner Rue was like, you know, don't upset, you know, don't upset him, don't make him look bad. And he's, for whatever reason, he doesn't think you're dangerous. And that, of course, is a stupid because Sarath is dangerous. As we see later on, she has a secret rendezvous with the younger Day and proposes a bloodless coup to essentially, um, you know, rob Day 
of his victory of having children that are going to sit on the throne eventually. And even though Day and Dawn are basically genetically the same, there's just the idea of it because Dawn obviously is being robbed of his birthright. And so the only way he can necessarily have anything else is to make sure that his kid are, are his kids are the ones that actually ascend to the throne. Uh, so man, there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on there. And I think that this, we have to say this all came about because day is so obsessed with, uh, and as he later on acknowledged, he's obsessed with getting out of the Cleonic dynasty because of what Harry Seldon says about how it's, it's poisonous basically to empire. Uh, and in so doing alienates his other selves and sort of sets this path. Um, I also did like the, that part because we get to hear about Demerzel acknowledging, yes, she is a, a, a robot that, uh, and apparently is a very long lived robot that somehow managed to survive what we now we're learning was the purge of, of, uh, I think they mentioned it earlier, but they, this more detail here, the purge of robots, which again changes this this um, you know this timeline because in the book timeline robots have been robots basically never went out into the galaxy in the original timeline spacers were you know racist ass colonists that uh, you know they kind of lorded their power over the earth for a while until their power was broken because of their basically their lack of of you know, offspring and reliance on robots. And they were the ones that really proliferated a robotic, uh, human robotic uh, sort of civilization. Whereas the human colonists from earth went on to be, you know, spread out and they never really, they hated robots and there were never robots there. But instead, apparently, and I know this is a long aside, but apparently in this timeline or this uh, version of the story, robots were part of the human expansion into the, into the uh, galaxy until for whatever reason, whatever that reason, they were outlawed and destroyed, except Demerzel. I have a, I have a real uh, theory about this. And my theory is, is that Demerzel in, in the, in the books, Demerzel is a different is goes by Demerzel, but it's a different robot that would never behave like this so she she mentions the three laws that govern her that that would prevent her from harming humans or allowing humans to come to harm the three laws of robotics look it up uh but that she her own one law is that she she protects empire okay well there's in the books there's a as a robot that has a, a similar function it is named Demerzel. my theory is that this robot actually still exists and that Demerzel is that robot's agent I can't prove that because if not, well, this really will change the way that this entire foundation series uh, ends relative to what the books say. But I digress. Um, all that stuff's super interesting. If that was the whole episode, that'd have been dope. But we also have all the things going on on Ignis and we have everything going on with, with Ho Romello. Uh Ho Romello was, you know, basically goes to the spacers and like, hey, Look, we know they got the spice melange. I, I, I mean, the, uh, you know, the little, the special vitamin water, whatever the hell that y'all have been engineered to need in order to live. And that y'all are the only ones that can navigate space. That's right. A dune ripoff. Uh, you take that as you will. It's a dune ripoff. Uh, and, but because the spacer, like the leader is, is just not willing to engage with Empire, uh, she sells him out. And then we get to see Hober Mallow and Bell Rios face to face for the first time and probably not the last time in this season. And uh yeah, physically speaking, uh he's no match for it. It's it's you know, he's no match for Bell Rios and his husband. But he does manage to make make a getaway and really give Bell Rios uh, uh something to, to think about and to report back to uh to Day and to Demerzel about the capabilities of the foundation, which as we know is fairly considerable. And that all leads back uh, to what, you know, well, before I go to that, the spacers are interesting as hell. They are definitely not like the book spacers. Uh, they are like the guild navigators in, in Dune. 
they have their own little society. They, they are genetically engineered and everything like that. Very interesting. I'd like to actually see and hear more about them, especially considering the fact that if Empire really is the source of a key, you know, uh, nutrient that they need to survive, they are in a shit ton of trouble because Empire is not long for the world. Uh, but that leads to a final, uh, a, a final confrontation between uh, the ghost of Harry Seldon, who's hitched a ride on on brother uh, brother Constance's mind, and between Day, who has been again preparing uh, to change the Cleonic dynasty to end it because of what Harry Seldon says. And I kind of there there's a little bit of foreshadowing of the fact that like this tree is just not not going to stop falling just because you know you're trying to you know days trying to push up against it to keep this red wood from falling over it's not going to happen um and the fact that he's trying to fight against it is probably going to hasten it actually he doesn't realize that now you see that little look from dawn uh when he talks about how they're united and everything i thought that was quite good and telling uh, and the look on, you know, Ghost Seldon's face was was quite telling. Also, um, the fact that Day thinks he can outsmart and outmaneuver him, and also that Polly was, you know, trying to do the right thing to sell, you know, sell uh, peace, and obviously it's not going to work. So all of these pieces are all coming together for this one crisis. One crisis, which I might note does not need Sal, you know, Salvor or Gale or the recently deceased uh, real live Harry Seldon um, who are on Ignis and there's something rotten on Ignis but we see Gale is essentially starting to come into her own as the leader she's you know she's the the presumptive new leader of uh, what's going to eventually be the second foundation the Mentalics. Uh, under the tutelage of Tellum. But at the same time, Salvor's not, you know, having it. All of this, what she sees as deception and, and people hiding things. And of course, she finds out the truth about Harry. And I suspect Gail knows about it. She's really, was really pushing her daughter to not, you know, pull on that string. Of course she does. And at the end, they leave it ambiguous. Is she dead, drowned, whatever, right next to the body of Harry Seldon? Uh, I guess we'll see, won't we? So, man, a lot of stuff going on in this episode, as you can tell by all the this talk I was doing. Uh, my God, like the the Demerzel and uh, you know the Demerzel and Sarah stuff was was just like biting. There's a lot of like just I don't want to call it backstabbing. There's a lot of like maneuverings that going on in here that, like I said, are gonna hasten the end of Empire. They are strong. They seem strong. Bel Rios, you know, his whole little thing about having to do, having to be the one that's that holds the sword here because someone else might have to do it and they won't be as good or won't have that in mind the good of, of the common people. I think that's very well placed. Um, good people in the position of having to do bad things for bad people. It's, it's very, it's interesting, but this confrontation is coming to a head soon. And my God, it, it looks like it is going to be just a barn burner. So anyway, those are my thoughts on this episode. What did you guys think about it? What did you think about what I had to say? Get down to the comment section, leave your thoughts there. And of course, you can always hit me up, supernotfunnyshow at gmail.com or at supernotfunnys1 on Twitter. And while you're down there, do me a favor, hit like on this video, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. All that good stuff helps to grow this channel, helps more people to see these videos. All right, thanks for joining me. Come back next week, episode eight of Foundation. We're going to talk all about it. Until then, I've been Mo, your comment extraordinaire on all things pop culture, and I'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace. Mm -hmm.